Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the Sandmeyer reaction. The Sandmeyer reaction is a group of nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions that start with anilines or substituted anilines and end up replacing the nitrogen group with uh, a nucleophile uh, and the source of that nucleophile is a copper salt. And in this reaction, uh, X can be any of the common, any of the halogens we're used to seeing, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, fluorine's another matter. Uh, but it can also be cyanide, which is an interesting uh, way to put a cyano, a cyano group or a nitrile on the aromatic ring because there's no easy electrophilic way to do that. Uh, it turns out that uh, the Sandmeyer reaction is actually the second half of this process. The first half of this process is something called the Hono uh, reaction. And, and I don't know that the Hono is react name is generally uh, agreed upon by, you know, everybody, but Hono comes from the reagent itself, which is sodium nitrite plus hydrochloric acid, and I have some sort of weird radical arrow there. Yeah. And I get out of, and what you get out of this is nitrous acid, which generally has the order of atoms HONO, and, and of course sodium chloride is the, and so nitrous acid is the active reagent, and therefore it's uh, generally called the Hono reaction. Uh, now the reaction itself is really interesting. Uh, and I'm not going to share the mechanism with you at this time. We're going to dedicate a later video to that uh, because this is actually not a reaction that's specific to anilines. Uh, most amines can react with uh, these reagents to form these diazonium salts. And then what those consequences look like depend on what the rest of the structure of the molecule is or what nucleophiles might be present, etc. But the most important part right now of this benzene diazonium salt is actually the, the N2 plus, right? That N2 plus looks like the leaving group equivalent of nitrogen, which is a, a gas, which has a triple bond in it. And so it's, uh, you know, actually a really good leaving group. So this, this goes into my list of supercharged leaving groups. And because we have now to have this supercharged leaving group, we might expect it, it to behave like other supercharged leaving groups. So now let's get down to the Sandmeyer reaction. So the Sandmeyer reaction starts uh, with these arine diazonium chlorides and it involves the copper salt. Usually it's a copper one salt, so C-U-X, though uh, there are some variations where uh, the copper two salt is also added and it improves the behavior of the reaction. And I'm not gonna talk about those cases at the moment, just wanted you to know about them. Given, uh, given what I told you about the N2 plus as a leaving group, you might expect a perfectly reasonable mechanism to involve loss of leaving group. And so I'm going to draw uh, the SN1 mechanism. And some of these reactions may in fact go by the SN1 mechanism. There's some reason perhaps to doubt the SN1 mechanisms, but a lot of people draw them and they're not, they're not, uh, horrible. So there's just some reasons to, to maybe think something else happens. Okay. So in the SN1 mechanism, the, the N2 leaving group leaves, we get a carbocation, uh, and then our nucleophile come in and comes in and does its business, uh, forming the new carbon nucleophile bond. So one of the reasons why the SN1 mechanism might not be the best idea here is that arine carbocations are less stable than primary carbocations. And that in the aqueous type solutions that these reactions occur, copper one salts don't dissociate to the degree the copper two salts. So maybe that's why sometimes people add copper two. 
so they sort of got two strikes against it. So uh, there is a second proposed mechanism for this reaction, the SRN, where this is substitution radical nucleophilic. Uh, and you might recognize some parts of this mechanism. And for this mechanism, I feel compelled to draw out the, the diazo group. And I'm going to draw some of the radical arrows, but not all of the radical arrows, because I don't think we need all of them. All right. But what happens initially with this mechanism is that we get uh, electron donation into the carbon nitrogen triple bond and however you think this needs to be represented um, or, or whether it needs to be represented let's see any nitrogen there's any double bond here and um, so now we've got uh We've got this radical intermediate going on here. And, and so the radical intermediate you know, has some different resonance structures, obviously, but I'm just going to leave, leave this one available. And we also get uh, the, the cation of the, the copper halide salt. And so then, oops, I don't want a radical arrow. Now I want a regular reaction arrow. Then what happens is breaking of the carbon nitrogen bond. And I'm not going to draw all of those arrows, but um, we generate an aromatic radical, and nitrogen is a leaving group. And then, let me get my, uh, I just have to go through to get copper. I'm going to need to do my own X. Copper has a positive charge. And so what's then suggested to happen is the uh, Copper or copper halogen bond breaks. The halogen goes with the benzene, and the copper this comes off, and is and and now we just have copper cations left alone in the system, which then pick up some other counter ion from from elsewhere in the reaction. You might recognize portions of this because this mechanism doesn't look all that different from what, hap what is supposed to happen in the uh, presence of a Grignard reaction type thing. Uh, so, but here is what this mechanism might look like. Uh, as I mentioned before, this reaction works really well with copper chloride, copper one bromide, copper one iodide, copper one uh, cyanide. Uh, and it's a reaction that proceeds really well with uh, completely conserved pre-geochemistry. So the nucleophile ends up where the leaving group was. So let's do uh, the cyanide here as an example. This reaction first converts the amine to the diazo group and then the diazo group to the nitrile. In the next video, uh, which might be the last one in the series, uh, I might get to palladium coupling reactions, I might not. Um, the next video I'll talk about some other reactions these arene diazonium salts can undergo 
using different nucleophiles that are probably more likely, less li likely to be uh, cation, but maybe not. Right? Thank you for watching.